Hi guys, my name is David. If you are new here, hi, welcome. And if you have been watching my videos for a while now, welcome back. So today I will be reviewing Needful Things by Stephen King. This took me ages to read. It took me about over two months to actually get through this book. And it's about 930 pages, so it's a big book. I have a physical copy of it. I got this uh, with a um, gift card that I got from work um, for being like a good employee, I suppose. And this is the one I, um, well, this is the one, well, this is one of the books I had bought on that gift card. I've been meaning to get through this one, or actually to this one for a while now, as it's regarded highly amongst Stephen King fans, so I was excited. I um, didn't know much about it, I only knew that it was about a mysterious shop that um, sells everything that you could possibly want or need, so I was excited to actually get through this one. So this book was originally published in October of 1991, there is a movie adaptation based on this novel as well, which I haven't seen, so if you have seen the movie adaptation of Needful Things, let me know down in the comments if it's worth my time watching. But that was released in the UK on the 8th of July 1994, but I'm not sure it could have been released in that year or it could have been released in 1993, um, I'm really not sure about the year. Maybe it was released in other countries in 1993 and released over here in the UK in 1994. I'm not sure. And the genre of this book is kind of strange. I'm, I wasn't really sure about what genre this book falls under. Online it's classified as horror. In a sense it is horror. It, it does actually have horror elements scattered throughout. But this isn't a horror book by any means. Um, I would more classify this as a thriller slash horror book. Um, but yeah, that's what I would classify it as. So before I tell you guys what the story is all about, I just want to say my usual things here, that this is going to be a spoiler free video and this is going to be my own thoughts and feelings regarding this book. So the story is set in the fictional world of Castle Rock or the fictional town of Castle Rock and uh, which does come up uh, time to time in several of Stephen King's novels. Castle Rock is um, is an ordinary American town where um, every where the community um, is very nice to everyone and everything seems to be very nice in Castle Rock. And then one day a mysterious shop opens up on the main street, um, right out of the blue. No one knows about it, and um, it's called Needful Things. It's, um, and um, Needful Things um, sells like second-hand items such, uh, I mean, I mean like, like, like a charity shop or a thrift shop or like a, a, like, a, um, cur 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 like a curiosity shop, it sells numerous items. And um, when you, so um, throughout the book, people are interested in this new shop as you probably were, I mean, would be in a community or a town. So everyone goes in there and wants to find out about this new shop and to um, welcome the owner of this shop to the town of Castle Rock. And um, this um, owner of this shop is actually called Leland Gaunt. Leland um, appears to be a very nice um, charming, well-educated, well-spoken, generally a nice guy. He um, interacts with his customers all the time and he seems to be very observant. He seems to um, linger in the background and just watch um, his customers around the shop. He's not one of these people which um, as soon as you go into his shop he like jumps on you and just greets you the moment that you open the door. He um, lets you um, wander around the shop and he kind of um, ob observes you. Um, but um, every single mo um, member of this town that goes into that shop finds an item that they really want or need. Um, this can be an item which they had from their past. This could be an item that they really want. Or it could be an item that they don't necessarily know that they want or need, but 
um, Leland um, shows it to them and they become obsessed with it. Kind of like Gollum with the Ring of Power. Um, through, so, the, uh, so, so for example, um, at the beginning there is a young boy who goes into the shop and he um, and um, he's a, a massive baseball fan. He has all these baseball cards, and there is this rare card that he wants. And um, Leland happens to have it, and more strangely, it is signed with the boy's name, which is extremely rare and unlikely. So, um, how Leland does business? He um, when he uh, has someone. In his shop and he has an item in front of him like kind of like like a um, baseball for example like a Red Sox baseball um, if you went into the shop and you really wanted this baseball he would ask you how much money have you got like in your pockets um, like if you had like a couple of dollars or a couple of pounds that that would actually be enough um, even if the item in question cost an absolute fortune like I me mean, for example if this baseball costs you know like 200 pounds or 200 dollars he would only ask you for like a couple of dollars or a couple of pounds for it knowing full well that it was expensive but money isn't the issue with Leland he offers you the item for only a small amount of money but he also asks you for a favor he wants you to um he actually asks you to um uh, prank somebody in the community. This can be one person or it could be several people um, This can range from uh, throwing mud at someone's laundry, throwing rocks at someone's windows or instantly enough giving someone an envelope uh, with a letter in it um, and um, Yeah, no one really um, they don't really when they do this they don't like question about why they're doing this um, they're kind of um, under a trance while they're doing it even if it's something completely out of their character like when a boy throws mud at someone's laundry that's hanging up in their backyard or their back garden he um, seems to be in a trance while he's doing it and when he comes out of that trance after completing his prank he um, kind of says oh my god I can't believe I've actually, I've actually done this so um, this goes on throughout the book and um, and uh, Leland is more of a um, I mean he is the villain of the story no question about it but he is kind of like a side villain he's kind of like in the shadows watching this town <clears throat> and uh, watching everyone like um, turn on each other and hate each other that's what he actually describes as I mean I mean in the book he describes himself as being a electrician I mean a electrician um, he um, describes people in the town and himself about um, manipulating them and uh, saying right if I tell this person to prank this person and this person will think that this person done it and that person will think that this person had done it um, I'm not sure if that makes sense but that's the best way that I can to, to, um, actually describe it um, Leland seems to know everything about everybody in this town about where they are what their habits are um, what they're thinking at that current time um, and um, he knows every single small minor detail about everyone in his, you know, in his community and um, that's kind of weird because he's new to this town and um, when people are doing these um, tasks and these pranks he's um, he's uh, kind of having a kind of telepathy in their minds he's talking to them within their brains and um, that's kind of weird and strange um, and um, Sorry, I'm just trying to think about what else to say, really. Um, and I mean, also, the items that he sells to people in the town are what they appear to be. Like, for example, going back to the Red Sox baseball. This could be... I mean, I mean, I, I don't follow baseball. I just got this because it's Stephen King's favourite baseball team. But, for example, if this was a very rare baseball from, the, from a very important Red Sox game, and um, I got this from his um, shop or his store, um, and uh, I saw it for a very rare, rare Red Sox baseball but in reality other people would probably see it as something very silly like maybe an elastic band ball and um, but um, that's kind of like an element of this book is that 
It gives me the impression that Leland has the ability to manipulate what people see and perceive in to actually be real. Kind of like what Pennywise in It has the ability to do. It has the ability to um, manipulate re reality and to uh, make people see whatever Pennywise wants them to see. And Leland is kind of like the same thing. Um, Leland isn't a violent man. He doesn't hurt or kill or murder anyone. He doesn't threaten anyone. He doesn't. He actually gives. He actually says at one point in the book that he doesn't even um, make anyone buy or purchase anything. He doesn't threaten them or anything like that. And he um, gives me the impression that if you go into the store and you're in you're into his shop, and um, you um, see something that you want or need. Um, you don't have to buy it, you can just say no and just walk out of the shop. He doesn't threaten you or force you to buy it. Um, and it's kind of weird about how he gets all these items. Like how like everybody that goes into the shop, he mysteriously has everything that everyone in this town wants. Um, regardless about what it is, how rare it is. And um, even if it's something like someone's had from their past, like um, like... I'm pretty sure that someone asked for a, um, like a fishing rod that their father had in the past that has actually died and the store happens to mysteriously have that item. There is a, um, there is a um, moment in this book where a um, woman ha asks for a, uh, or she buys a photograph of Elvis Presley or the King as he's referred to in the book. Kind of like funny about how um, Stephen King refers to Elvis Presley as the King when <laughs> His name is, I mean, his surname is King himself. Um, but this lady is obsessed with this uh, photo. And even when the glass gets cracked, when Leland threatens her and he cracks the glass, the photo of Elvis ages and deteriorates. And um, everyone, as I said, everyone in this um, town um, does all these pranks on each other. They turn on each other. They um, threaten each other. Even if the um, person who, um, like, um, like if someone, if it's if, if like a small boy threw a rock through someone's window with a, with a letter wrapped around a brick, which happens in the book, someone may um, uh, think that someone completely different in a town uh, did that, and um, everyone turns on each other in this book, and um, Leland is kind of like sitting in his, you know, standing in his shop, like with a massive smile on his face looking at everything that he's done and enjoying it. And this kind of made me think a lot about Randall Flagg, about how Randall is like that. He's mischievous. He likes to, have, he actually likes to create chaos within a community or a situation and watch uh, and actually sit back and actually watch the chaos unfold before his very eyes. And this gives him a sense of joy and a sense of being superior. And that is what, Reminds me a lot about Leland. I I don't I, I I know for a fact that Leland isn't Pennywise or um, Randall Flag, as um and um. I mean I have a sense I can't really describe it. I really cannot. But um I think Leland is his own separate entity. Is he possibly related or this or actually or, or possibly the same species as Pennywise and Randall Flag? Possibly, because throughout the book he is referred to as being the Poison Man. And um, he is referred to um, a few times as being not human. And that is what Leland is, he isn't human. His eyes change, his um, finger, his, his hands and fingers are referred to as being um, kind of like a, um, like a corpse's hands, like skeletal hands. And... Um, this book doesn't really focus on a one specific character. He, it focuses on different perspectives from different people in this community. But um, at the end, um, or throughout the book, um, a um, sheriff of this town called Alan Pangborn is investigating these strange occurrences and he um, uh, wants to investigate uh, Le Leland and this mysterious shop. And at the end, it's kind of like, um, he wants to find out about what's actually happening within his town. And I just want to um, say another thing about this is how evil Leland is. There is a moment in this book where a character, I won't say who it is because I don't want to spoil it if you decide to read this book, but 
there are these two brothers and one brother ha it has actually bought an item in this um, store and he's become obsessed with it and he becomes um, completely distraught about it about what he's actually become about what this Leland has actually done to him and he's sitting in the garage one day and his brother is there and he has a shotgun or a gun to his um, face and he actually shoots himself in front of his brother right before he actually asks his brother and or begs his brother not to go in this store and um, buy anything in this store he doesn't he says don't go into this, to this shop don't talk to this man and he does this right before he shoots himself right in front of his brother and then it goes to a scene where Leland is in his store with a massive smile on his face and you know at that point that yes he knows what he has done he knows that this um, boy has actually killed himself in front of his brother he's perfectly um, aware about what he is doing and um, he doesn't care he cares about he doesn't really seem to care about anything he seems to care about his um, business and to creating chaos within the, within the community. I don't really know about what he gets out of it, but um, a sense of joy or achievement by watching people suffer, I'm not really sure. So what I liked about this book is the connections that it has with other novels that are set in Castle Rock. And um, it, it actually mentions the Dead Zone, it mentions Cujo, it mentions uh, the body, um, more specifically, it, men it mentions the bully of um, that novel or the movie Stand By Me, which is Ma which is um, Ace Mer Merrill, which is the bully of that story. Um, he is a big part. Of, well, not really a big part. He is a like kind of kind of like a um, like a nice like sizable part within this book, as he kind of helps Leland throughout this book, and uh, it mentions the um, kids that were in the body as well. Um, so that was kind of like a nice thing and um, I like the whole um, I like the idea about this store and Leland as a character um, that's all what I can really say about this book really so what I disliked about the book is that because of its size this book does drag a lot for me personally don't don't get me wrong I did enjoy this book the ending was so incredibly good and weird as hell um, and I didn't see it coming but that but most of the book doesn't focus around Leland or one specific person or a group of people it focuses on different people within this community and the situations that they get themselves into um, and um, with that you can't really like focus on one specific person or one specific group of people um, and um, I mean the whole story was fine but um, it kind of dragged a lot for me personally so the connections that this book has with Stephen King's mul multiverse as I said it does mention or refer to other novels based in the town of Castle Rock such as the Dead Zone which wasn't technically set in Castle Rock but part of it was it mentions Cujo and it mentions the body um, and um, Ace Merrill as I said and um, not sure if I've missed out any other Castle Rock books. It um, does mention the um, mental asylum that um, Henry Bowers finds himself in, which is called Jupiter Hill, several times in this book. And it does mention briefly the town of Derry, but it doesn't refer to Pennywise whatsoever. And um, with all that said, because it's mentioning Derry, this book is connected to the Dark Tower. So closing thoughts. Um, if you haven't read any Stephen King, I wouldn't start off with this one as it may put you off because it is a slow burn, well for me anyway. Um, if you have read a um, like in, like a good number of Stephen King books and you want to read something a bit different, um, I would definitely read this one. Um, even though it does drag a lot for me, I'm kind of like in the middle with this one, um, but um, I probably would probably will like it better on a reread so um so um I wouldn't read this if you're all new to Stephen King but if you have read a number of his books then I would definitely give this one a try so I'm gonna rate this book a three stars out of five 
it was a slightly above average book for me by Stephen King but um, please don't come for me um, I, it's actually not like I hated this book or didn't or actually disliked it it's just that it was a very slow book or slow burn for me and as I did say I will probably like this book a lot better on a reread so currently I am going to give this book a three stars out of five so that's it guys that is my review on Needful Things by Stephen King Hopefully this video hasn't been too long. If you have stayed with me throughout this whole time, thank you so much, it means a lot to me. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like, comment down below, um, subscribe if you're new. If you do subscribe, please click on the little bell notification just so you know whenever I upload videos, which I are every Monday and Friday. Also, I will put a link down in the description, a link to my Goodreads account, so in case you want to follow me on Goodreads. And with all that said, have a great day, read some awesome books, and I will see you all in my next video.